when I prove my holiness among, oh, excuse me, wrong one. My eyes are always on the Lord, for he rescues my feet from the snare. Turn to me and have mercy on me, for I am alone and poor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. We gather together on this third Sunday of Lent. We prepare ourselves to enter into the sacred mysteries. And we offer a special welcome to those who are participating online with the Catholic Engaged Encounter Weekend. We ask mercy and forgiveness for our sin. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, nor anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The law of the Lord is perfect refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. Lord, you have the words of everlasting life.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim this gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years? and you'll raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they came to believe the scriptures and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about a human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospel that we just finished hearing reminds me of the Spanish saying, Se le fueron las cabras, which is an expression that says, He lost it. It's when somebody gets angry, frustrated, they start throwing things, kicking things, etc. They say, Híjole, se le fueron las cabras. Somebody could ask, ¿Qué le pasó a Chuy? Uh, Chuy is a, is a nickname for Jesus, for the name Jesus. No sé, se le fueron las cabras. And so, it seems like Jesus has lost it. But we have to put it in context of John's gospel. And in John's gospel, Jesus is always in control. He even says, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down freely. 
I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. Jesus has not lost it. He's very much in control here. He is pointing to something that John's gospel uh, refers to as sort of replacement, if you will. If you're going to get a new sofa, because the old one, the springs have worn out and the foam is sagging, you're not going to get one that's in worse condition. You're going to replace it with something better, something newer. Well, Jesus is replacing these sacrificial animals with something better. And what is that something better? It is Jesus himself. Later on in the Mass, just before communion time, I hold up the host and the chalice, and I say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Earlier in John's Gospel, John the Baptist points out to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and that will be shown most perfectly, most beautifully on Good Friday when at the very hour that the Passover, the, the lambs are being sacrificed in the temple, Jesus is crucified. He is now the newer, the better Paschal Lamb who takes away the sins of the world. Just like the blood of the Lamb which marked the doorposts and the lintels of the Israelites in Egypt saved them, the destroying angel passed over them. So now the blood that goes forth from the Lamb of God now marks the homes of all believers. But this change is not accepted very readily, is it? Because they say to him, give some sign that you have authority to do this. And I don't know if he thought it, but Jesus, you want a sign? Okay, I'll give you a sign. I'll give you seven of them. Just before this, Jesus had changed the water into the wine at the wedding feast of Cana. God working through Jesus, giving something, not just ordinary wine, but the best of wines. Soon after this, Jesus will heal the royal official son also at Cana. But the son is sick in Capernaum. His father goes to Jesus, heal my son. And Jesus said, unless you people see signs, you won't believe. And then Jesus dismisses him, says, You're, go, your son will get better. He goes, he trusts Jesus, and they come and tell him, your son is going to live. When did he improve? And it was at the very hour that Jesus had said, go, your son will live. Want another sign? The paralytic who was healed at the pool of Bethesda. Even though I'd been sick for 30 some years, Jesus, who is the healing water, is the one who says, stand up, take up your mat and walk. Jesus then multiplies the loaves and the fish, feeds thousands. I think God is at work here. If that's not enough, there's another sign of walking on the sea, trampling on death, because the sea is an image of death, chaos, disorder. And Jesus just walks over it. The healing of the blind man. And finally, the raising of Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. Even though he'd been dead for four days, and Martha the sister had objected, Lord, there'll be a stench. His body will have started to decompose. Did I not tell you if you believed you would see the glory of God? These are the signs 
But these pale in comparison to the ultimate sign, which is the sign that we are celebrating this morning here. The death and the resurrection of Jesus made present in this saving sign of the Eucharist. And that's why the host is held up and the chalice and says, Behold the Lamb of God, the new victim, the new sacrifice. In Jesus, we have the priest, the victim, and we have even the new temple altar sacrifice destroy this temple he told the those authorities that day give some sign well the sign will be when i'm raised from the dead his disciples remembered that we remember it that's what brings us here sunday after sunday to remember the Lord's death and resurrection, the saving sign by which our sins are forgiven, we're restored to newness of life, and we have hope of salvation. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Let us worship in spirit and in truth. I invite you now, please stand. Let us make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Confidently, we present the needs of the church and the world to our Heavenly Father. That the worship which the church offers the Father may be done in spirit and truth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those preparing for baptism at Easter may be strengthened in their faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the laws of our nation and state may uphold the sacredness of human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the vaccination against COVID-19 may be successful in ending the pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those infected with COVID-19 may be restored to health. May their caregivers be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the alms given with the rice bowls May, ha may help provide food, clean water, medical service, or education to those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety and success of Pope Francis' pastoral visit to Iraq today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Clara Villarreal on her birthday, for the repose of the souls of Dora Maestas, as well as Ramona Montoya. May they rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
and we pray for the couples that are preparing to enter into marriage, that the Lord will bless them on their journey as they enter into this holy bond. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for blessings on Clara, may I tell them your age? Yes, no? That was her daughter. <laughs> Called her out on her 90th birthday, so. So blessings on Clara, God of all creation. We offer you grateful praise for the gift of life. Hear the prayers of Clara, your servant, who recalls today the, the day of her birth and rejoices in your gifts of life and love, family and friends. Bless her with your presence and surround her with your love that she may always enjoy many happy, another 90 years. <laughs> All of them pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. And if we were Polish, we would sing the we would sing the stolat stolat, which is may you live a hundred years, may you live a hundred years. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Live love each other as a sign of peace. Remember just to bow. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house forever singing your praise. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the next couple of Saturdays, confession will begin at 1.30 p.m. on Saturdays and continue to 3 o'clock p.m. Once we make the change from daylight saving time or from standard time to daylight saving time, confessions will be at 3 o'clock from 3 to 4.30 p.m. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God, or, or bow down for the blessing, excuse me. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful and blessed Sunday, everybody. Mm -hmm.